You guys, this has been so frustrating. Hey guys, Ryan here from Bro Builds. Today we're installing a hidden wireless charger in the center console of my 1986 Pontiac Fiero GT. And we're gonna update the stereo to a Pioneer unit with wireless Apple CarPlay. For the wireless charger, the first thing I need to do was prepare the center console. I removed the insulation from underneath and separated the vinyl cover so I didn't accidentally cut through it. Then I just marked where I wanted the charger to sit and started cutting with my Dremel. I made sure it fit correctly, then cut out the padding so it didn't interfere with the wireless charging. Then I super glued the charger to the console to temporarily hold it in place. I used some adhesive called Automotive Goop that I got from AutoZone, and I slathered it on and then heated up the vinyl to make it a little more pliable, and with my brother's help, clamped everything together. I think it's gonna work, guys. This glue takes uh, like 24 hours to cure, so we're just gonna have to leave it here and hope for the best. While the center console was setting up, I got started on fitting the new larger stereo. Stock, the climate control is up here, but we're gonna move it down and then have a doubled in stereo right above it here. I bought a 3D printed bezel and brackets to relocate the AC controls from a dude named Casey Carter on the Fiero Facebook group. In order to move the stereo up, I had to cut some pieces out of the center console skeleton. Following the instructions of Casey and using my Dremel with a plastic cutoff wheel, I made pretty short work of it. All you really have to do is cut off the crossbar that holds the AC controls in their stock location and then cut out the bottom portion here so the AC controls can sit as low as possible in its new location. After cleaning up the edges with the file, the skeleton was ready to be installed back in the car. Lift the climate control, I don't really need to take it out. All right, so then the key here is the skeleton goes in between these little plastic things. Now that the skeleton is reinstalled, let's see how the wireless charger is doing. It's been about 24 hours and we're gonna take this apart. What we're most afraid of is that this indent that is here will not stay. That basically, I'm pretty sure the glue is solid between the vinyl and the uh, charger, but what we're afraid of is that once we release the clamps, the whole thing's just gonna raise up. So I don't know, we'll just pull it apart and see what happens. Wait, is it gonna stay? Oh no, did we tear the, oh no. Shoot, man. Ben, it kept the shape. Ben was especially afraid that it wasn't going to. I didn't quite, didn't quite push down that corner. This side is really good, but can you guys see how this side's raised up? That I would have preferred to get pushed in. I wonder if some foam got in there or something. Let's see how my phone fits. Cause if it doesn't, the phone doesn't sit in there all the way. Ah, yes. All right, let's plug it in. Let's see what happens. This is a real moment of truth, you guys. The charger has power. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy. The next part to this project is disassembling this because I don't want the cord coming out from underneath and then plugging into the cigarette lighter. What I'm gonna do is take this apart so I can use the USB plug, but then this end, I will hardwire this in, that way all the cords for the wireless charger will be hidden. It'd be pretty awesome. I ended up using a different, smaller USB port. All I did was solder a couple wires to it, then spliced those wires into the back of the cigarette lighter. Now I have a hidden charging port. So the next day I went back to look at the center console and found this. The vinyl had almost completely separated from the charger. So I decided to give it another try. This time I took the charger apart and used a piece of plywood in the hopes that the glue would stick better to that than it did to the charger. But this one didn't work either. 
This time it looked great and held together, but it wouldn't charge. So back to the drawing board. I figured the charger would work better through plastic than it did through the wood. I was wrong, it still didn't work. So I went to the store and I got a couple new chargers. That's not gonna work. All right. I decided to use the smaller round one. I cut a hole in the plastic with a little bit of a beveled edge so the charger couldn't pull through. And I used a ridiculous amount of Gorilla Glue and had to wait another 24 hours. So while that was drying, I wired up my stereo using some wire crimps and wiring diagrams for the car and the stereo. I reinstalled the stereo, again using Casey's instructions. I also installed a backup camera and a subwoofer. Now back to the center console. Attempt number four actually turned out great. With the wireless charger finally working and the glue holding, the last thing to do was to place the USB port for the new stereo. I knew there was no good spot up front for it, so I bought a USB port from Amazon and installed it next to the cigarette lighter. And, and now it's time to put everything back together. Not only do I have a handy place to put my phone, but it actually charges while it's sitting there. The backup camera is super handy, the subwoofer sounds great, and I think the new stereo looks awesome. This project definitely brings this 35-year-old sports car into the 21st century. At least a little bit, but not too much. So what do you guys think? Would you consider putting a new stereo in an old car? What about the wireless charger? Feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys have to say about it. Be sure to subscribe so you guys don't miss the next Fiero video. We're gonna be doing a partial suspension rebuild. The Fiero is gonna get a new front sway bar, rear sway bar, spring shocks, and a few other things. If you guys have enjoyed this video at all, please hit that like button. It really does make a difference for us. Later.